Hello and welcome back to MTEL. Uh, today we are working on this uh, 1.3 diesel Corsa. Um, it's a 2009 plate. Basically this car came in with running issues. Um, it basically was hard to start and when it did start basically it was coughing and spluttering and if you tried to accelerate it basically done nothing. It basically just plumed out the back and just coughed and spluttered and didn't go anywhere. The most interesting thing about this one though is it had no engine warning light on whatsoever. As far as the ECU was aware, the car was actually running totally fine, even though it was definitely wasn't. Now basically, the symptoms were, when I tried to start it basically, even though I glowed it, like it hit the glow plugs a couple of times before I actually fired it, so I glowed it like three times, and then I cranked it to start it, it was still trying to start like it was had no preheat, so it was coughing into light misfiring and spluttering all over the place and then finally when it got a little bit of heat in it it actually settled down then it started idling a little bit but just smoked really bad out of the back but if you tried to accelerate harsh basically it wouldn't accelerate it stayed pretty much where it was but all it done was just plume loads of unburnt diesel out of the back of it but once you let it sit idling for about four minutes it started settling down and getting a little bit better now again, when you try to harshly accelerate, so just put your foot down on the throttle, it just basically just coughed and plumed out the back. But, if you slowly accelerated, so slowly as the engine accelerated up, it started accelerating. And it, you had to literally move it down and it took you about a minute to get it up to about 3000 RPM. But it would accelerate, but as it was doing it, literally it just smoke screened out the back of it, unburned diesel, literally like was drifting down the road um, but again no engine warning lights so the first thing I went for on it because obviously we've got nowhere to go for is basically trial and error is I changed the diesel filter first of all so I pulled the diesel filter I popped the tap on the bottom dumped the diesel out of the filter to see if there was any metal swarf or any contamination in the fuel fuel was clean all was good so then I fitted a new diesel filter put that in and then this then what I then done is I got a pipe onto the bleed pipe here on the top, cracked that off into a tub, turned the ignition on to see that the in tank pump was working to make sure that it was pumping fuel basically because these have a lift pump in the tank. And I turned the ignition on and fuel shot out basically into the cup so I knew that my in tank pump was working as well. So then there was very few things now that could actually cause a fault that could do this. So the next thing I went for was EGR valve because the symptoms that it had, where it was basically, when you were trying to harshly accelerate, it wouldn't do anything. But when you actually went slowly on the accelerator, it started to accelerate, did seem a lot like an EGR valve. Now rather than actually replacing the EGR valve, which costs 150 quid, because I was unsure whether it was the EGR valve or not, what I done is I cut myself a little blanking plate <coughs> that went between the EGR valve and the cylinder head which mounts down the back of the engine bolted the plate in which had no hole it was just basically a copy of the gasket which had no hole in and I used a bit of one mil plate put that in there, cranked it up, done it up um, which blocks off the EGR valve and then basically fired the car up car run fine basically, no issues accelerated fine, drove fine so basically, there was our fault. EGR valve had basically gone down, the valve had probably burnt out. What? But because it wasn't throwing up an engine warning light, obviously there was nothing wrong with the control and motor side of the EGR valve. It was all the valve, the mechanical part of the actual EGR valve itself. That's why it was doing what it was doing. So it burnt the valve out inside and the gases were just blowing past it. The exhaust gases were coming round into the intake manifold and then basically what it was doing is it was just choking the engine up. It was just pumping exhaust gas straight into the cylinder, into the inlet manifold and suffocating it, basically. And that's why it was coughing and spluttering and wouldn't accelerate properly. So when you try to harshly accelerate, you bang loads of diesel in to accelerate it. And of course it had no oxygen. All it had was, unbur was burnt air, basically, exhaust gases. So it just couldn't flash the diesel off and that's why it was doing. But when you went slowly on the accelerator, 
the injectors didn't bang in loads of fuel, they slowly injected a bit more and a bit more, and it managed to accelerate. Now basically, I've blanked the EGR valve and now it runs, and theoretically, if you've got this problem with your car, your 1.3 diesel, this is the twin cam version, I think it's like a Z9, Z13 um, TD something, um, basically, you can blank your EGR valve and you can leave it blanked rather than putting a valve, new valve in and you can drive it like that. Now, I wouldn't suggest leaving it like that for too long because you're just filling the side of the head with carbon and when you want to do the EGR valve, you'll have to get that all out. Um, but if you don't ever want to change it or you basically just want to use it and pull it about, you can do it. Um, I will also say these engines are also in combo, com, uh, Vauxhall combos and Astros and things like that. Um, so yeah, but today what we're doing is we are actually removing and replacing the EGR valve on this engine. Very hard job because the EGR valve itself is literally located down here, right under in inlet manifold, and it's very hard to get to. Um, and there's a couple of things you've got to take off. Now at the moment I've got. I've, uh, I've taken the scuttle panel off, which is this part here that sits underneath the windscreen. Basically the top just unclips, take the window wipers off, you pull the top off, and it sits in this track so you just prise it out really gently. Take that off, and then you've got your under tray, which then sits along here, and basically comes out to about here, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts in it. You undo them bolts, pull the washer pipe out, and then basically, disconnect this from it and then basically you slot that out and take that out and it opens up your old, your entire engine bay so you can get this job. Now basically what you've got to do when you take this off, the EGR, the EGR valve has an EGR cooler on the back of it basically um, and it has water going around it so you have to drop some of the coolant. Now it looks very like hard to actually get the pipes off but it is actually very simple and theoretically you only have to take two, two cooling pipes off. You have to take one of the pipes off that go to the interior heat matrix which is the one on the left and the other pipe you have to take off is the return pipe which go or the feed pipe which comes off the back of the thermostat housing basically and that go, comes off the back and it's a little plastic pipe that comes at the back of the thermostat housing you take that one off, that loops round up behind the EGR valve and then basically goes into a little bit of metal which then takes it round and then passes it back into the EGR cooler. So you take the two pipes off, two screws to take the pipe out of the back of the inlet manifold, pop that out, two bolts onto the back of the head and then the EGR cooler comes off. Now to get the EGR cooler up, EGR valve out, you have to disconnect your intake pipe from your inlet manifold there's a bolt on the side of the thermostat housing and three bolts round by the actual intake where it goes into the inlet manifold. And they're all torque drive stuff as well. Most of the stuff is all torque drives. <coughs> so you need, and they are very, the bottom one on the bottom of the EGR valve is very hard to get to. I used a Allen key, Torx drive key, and then put a spanner on it to undo it basically because I physically couldn't get a torque drive socket in because there's a pipe literally that's like the nut heads there and the pipes like that so the only thing I could get on was a long key or you could do it with a long extension torque drive key so um, <clears throat> but yeah so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing to try and get that back view so I can show you about what needs to be taken off and where about your EGR valve is and I will say this job is not the hardest thing in the world, but it is very fiddly. So it's about one, two, obviously not including the tray. There's one, two, there's one, two, three, four bolts on the intake pipe, the two bolts onto the EGR valve, which bolt it to the cylinder head, another two bolts into the back of the inlet manifold you have to take out as well, and then two pipes have to be taken off. So that's pretty much what you have to, and you have to disconnect the electrics from it, basically pop the connector off. Um, <coughs> and then basically you can fish your EGR valve out. Now this is what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna reposition the camera, try to give you the best shot I can. It's not gonna be great because obviously the EGR valve is underneath the inlet manifold, right at the back of the engine. So physically I'm gonna have to put my GoPro down the back of the engine, maybe over the top of the gearbox, pointing up, 
I'll do my best, but I've, that's why I've tried to explain it as best as I can so you know about the bolts and you know where they are and then hopefully I can get a good shot and I can point to the bolts and help you along. Right, let's get to work. I'm gonna push you back first. I'm gonna dump the coolant. I'm not gonna dump all the coolant. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the pipes off and drop the head of coolant, which is up by the EGR valve. So it will still have coolant in it, but I'm just gonna lose the top bit. And then I'll just have to put a couple of liters back of coolant back in it to actually bring it back up to its full level. So that's what we're gonna to do today. If you wanna drop all your coolant, more, there's no problem with doing that. You can dump it all. It's just as easy. Um, you'll just have to do a complete system, like system refill up. All right. Right. So let's get to work. Anyway, right now. Right. Okay. Now this is. <coughs> okay. Right. Now I've got to actually hold the camera to give the best shot I can. Now basically, you can see here. This is the EGR valve right in the middle with this blanking plug right about here where my fingers are you can see the two bolts one there and then one up here see that so there's two hex bolts either side of my fingers they're the two hex bolts either side of my fingers that's the back of the EGR valve and then over here is the EGR cooler now basically this pipe here this is the actual feed for the EGR valve into the inlet manifold and basically then you've got, you can see you've got two metal pipes off the EGR cooler. The bottom one loops round and then goes onto this pipe here, which my finger's on, which feeds, goes to the interior heater matrix and that loops back round and goes onto a metal pipe which is on the bottom of the EGR cooler. The other one loops round and then comes round basically, I'll try to get the torch. loops round, comes up here basically, and then connects to the side. Yeah, basically loops round there underneath the intake pipe and goes onto the side of the, basically onto the side of the back of the oh, um, thermostat housing. I'm trying to get the best view I can of it, but unfortunately, uh, you're just going to really have to take my word for it, because unfortunately it's posing a bee. And an absolute nightmare. So yeah, on the back of the yeah, there you go. So that's underneath. There, there's the pipe that goes onto the back of the OM thermostat housing, basically. And up above it, um, so up here where my thumb is, or basically this, you can see the body of the EGR valve. It goes just underneath that. And basically, so you have to pipe, pop that pipe off there. Yeah, so it's, there you go. But this is the intake pipe here with the bolts around it, basically. Just here. It's there. The three bolts around it, so here. So there are the bolts around the intake pipe that you have to take off. Um, so yeah, and you can also see now, if I turn that up that way, you can see the pipes on the back of the, on the interior heat matrix, that go to the interior heat matrix. You've got the one that's got the clip halfway up the pipe, which is the one on the left, which has got the funny wiggle on it. And then the one on the right, which has got the R written on it. You have to remove the pipe on the left. And all you've got to do is pop up that clip there, and then you can pull the pipe off. I'm sorry for the bad video footage. It's the best I can do, seeming where the EGR valve is. Oh, um, but I'm gonna get to work now, and oh, um, we'll go from there. Right, okay. I've got the two coolant pipes off now. So I'm gonna show you where I've taken them off. I've got that one down there, which is off. So that's the pipe from the to the interior heat matrix. We've removed that now. And then the other pipe I've got off is down there, if you can see that. 
down there. No, no view, no room anywhere. Absolutely nothing. And that is off the back of the thermostat housing. You can see the pipes now disconnected and been pulled out of the bracket. So the both pipes now for the EG, EGR cooler have been removed and the coolant has leaked out now basically. Right, next job. I'm gonna remove this intake pipe here, which comes up here. Three torque screws, one there, one there, one there. And then there's one down the side here. So there's one basically that goes in down here. And then basically there's a bracket at the front. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo the bracket at the front as well. And then I'm gonna push the pipe over and tuck it out of the way so we can get a bit more better view at the EGR valve. Right, okay. We've now got the intake back pipe back. You can see that. This thing here is your EGR valve. Right. Anyway, now we've got to take the EGR valve off. There is a, we've got to take the clip off first of all. Now I've already undone the bracket, which is on the back of this flexi pipe. It's like a metal corrugated pipe. The bracket looks like this, like that. Um, I've already got one bolt out, which is just down here. So you can see the bolt hanging out at the bottom. I've already taken out, which is just down here. You see, it's the one at the bottom that I said it's hard to get to. I'd use a uh, this, not that one. I'd use a T40 Allen key drive bolt. So we've got physically one bolt, and we've got the connector at the top there holding the actual EGR valve on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop that connector off. So the connector, get this little screwdriver, pop that back like so. Push the clip down, and off she comes. Simple as. So now that's off. Now we got we're at the EGR valve. Now all we got to do is there's literally just one bolt holding it on, which is up the top. Well, basically, we've got to undo this last torque drive, which sits up under here. So it sits. We've got the, the ratchet on it, if you can see that. Oh. The ratchet now is on the bolt, which is down there. So now I'm going to do that. And fish this EGR out. there you have it and that is your EGR valve so make things a bit easier for people to see now basically this is the valve here and the control unit and these are all these lasso of pipes that are all over it basically this is your cooler your EGR cooler this is the pipe this one here it goes to your thermostat housing and then this one here see that loops around under here that goes to the interior heater matrix that's the bolt that is a nightmare to get to obviously so as you can see if you try to get drive key on there it just won't work you'll be like you'll be like that you just can't get it in there square if you imagine like that so you just can't get it in there square so the easiest way is to use an allen key which will go in there square and then you can undo that bolt. The other bolt that holds it to the cylinder it goes in here, in here. Now basically, when we put a new valve on, we've got to take the cooler off, which is this part. So there's a bolt there, bolt there. They have to come off, and there's a bracket down the bottom there, which has to be undone as well. That big segment, because it's just this bit, which is the new bit. As for that blanking plate that I made, this is it here. Now basically, this is the new EGR valve here, so you can see them side by side what part you're replacing. Uh, the new EGR valve, which is here, comes with two new gaskets which are in this bag. You've got the gasket here, goes between the actual cooler, and then you've got the gasket here which goes 
between the block and the valve, block between the head and the valve basically. Now this EGR blanking plate I made, which is here, you see that, basically went over there like that. Oh, ran that way. Yeah, it went on like that. And basically all it did, it's got no hole in it, so it's the same as that. It's a complete copy of the two. And basically it just blanks the flow into the EGR valve, blanking it off basically. <laughs> Then your car basically acts like it hasn't got an EGR cooler. So now what I'm going to do, if I've got to now whip this, take this EGR cooler off and stick it onto the back of this one and put all the pipes on it and build it all back up, ready to go back on the car. And then I need to clean off the head face as well, ready to take the new EGR valve. Right, okay, anyway. New EGR valve's all built up, ready to go back on, which is there, as you can see. Um, I will say when I took the EGR valve out, I fished it. Let's see if I show you that. I fished it out of this point here, basically, over the top of the boost pipe. It does come out over the top. It is very, very fiddly, but it does come out. Right. So what I'm going to do now, anyway, is I'm going to refit this EGR valve. I'm probably not going to video this. Um, obviously, if I've I've shown you enough information about getting the valve out itself. Um, now, basically, the reason I'm not going to film it is you can't you can't really see anything anyway because it is so hidden and concealed around the end of the back of the engine. But yeah, so things I I also took a couple of things off to get out get it out. I took off. I also unplugged the brake servo line, which goes on here. You just push a little button, pop it off. Yeah, I also took off the other, uh, the other oh, um, interior heater matrix pipe, which comes from this point here, down here. You can see that there. You can't see nothing. Yeah, it's down there anyway. It goes to there to the bulkhead. I will say this job is a pig purely because you can't see any of the bolts because they're all tucked down behind the inlet manifold. It is a headache of a job. There's not many bolts involved to it, um, pure. but the problem is you're going to need a mirror because you can't see any of the bolts. So you need a mirror to be able to see where the bolts are so you can actually undo them. And then it's just a load of fiddling about and a load of effort. Oh, um, so yeah, but anyway, if you've managed to get it off, Pretty much, you can get it back on. All you got to do, all you just make sure you clean up all the surfaces for the new gaskets, plug it all back in, put all the pipes back on, fill it full of coolant, and away you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, this is a very, very tricky job. So, if you have got a spare few hundred quid, it might be worth taking it to a garage and letting them have the headache rather than you. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's been useful. Sorry about the bad footage, but pretty much, unless I cut, take the engine out, or cut a hole in the bulkhead, <laughs> so you can actually see from the back, I can't get any better footage unless the engine's out, really, and I'm not going to take the engine out for an EGR valve. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe to the video. Um, if you have found this useful, and I'll, um, I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much.